to totally integrated instrumentation. In this video we continue our look at Modbus TCP data. So previously um, we talked about a device that you can use to convert Modbus 485 data to TCP and the reason for doing that is you can have multiple masters. So I'm going to show you the end goal. Um, we're already communicating with Modbus TCP through this converter which I'm going to show you in a minute um, and uh, the, the, the data is not interesting because you, you can see here the density is one and there's no flow but I have a connection. If we have a look at the device itself if we have a look at the start screen this is the the Anybus uh, Modbus gateway and if we have a look at status this is all done through through a, a, a web browser so under here I have three connections and you can see my valid responses um, there's been some exceptions because I've been turning uh, things on and off and if I go to my uh, if I go to maintenance station I can see PDM is also connected via another PC so I have TIA portal collecting the data and uh, PDM being used centrally at the same time and that's the beauty of this gateway because we can have up to eight masters um, connected to one of these gateways multiple Modbus 485 or a single 232 instrument connected to the other side of the gateway so it's ideal so I've got the, the information here into PDM but if I also go to my maintenance station I now have a Modbus device uh, communicating through the gateway connected into um, uh, PDM maintenance station this is version 2 but you know, it could be version 3 or version 4 when that comes out and that now opens up the possibility of connecting this Modbus device to um, IoT app such as Citrans Sam IQ. So what we're going to have a look at next is uh, um, how we set the gateway up and how we get PDM uh, communicating to this device. When the gateway is shipped it comes with a default address. If you go onto the um, HMS or any bus website there is a, a, a free tool to download to change the IP address um, but I've already done that and in this case my IP address uh, is 130 and my domain is 1. So you need to make a note of that because you're going to, to need to set up uh, the uh, serial uh, converter uh, with that information. So if we go into that, the default password is admin and admin. Of course I would recommend that you change that once you've uh, configured this for the first time. So first thing we need to do is we have a look at our network which is the Modbus um, TCP side of, of the device and of course because we're looking at automation we want to assign that a static IP address because our PLC is going to be talking to this at some point so we don't want dynamic just in case um, and then we have uh, our IP address and our, and our net mask. The serial converter that we're using won't let you put in a gateway so the serial converter that's sat on the PDM PC needs to be sat on the same domain as the converter. So save your settings there then we go to the Modbus 485 side of the device and you can see here physical connection 485 and we're going to be connecting this to um, a uh, Siemens Citrans FC410 and the default board rate for that device is uh, uh, 19,200 and parity is even stop bits is one so put that in so it's less changes that you have to do to the flow meter and this extra delay between messages is the interframe spacing so you 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 transmit your 16 bit um, word and there's no comma to distinguish between the end of that transmission so what we tend to use is a, a transmission where uh, nothing happening 
and that's basically what that is so 15 milliseconds and that will prevent data overrunning into each other and then down here um, your port number this is really important 502 is the default port over over ethernet for modbus tcp now you can change that if you want but when you come to program your tia portal project you need to make sure it matches so for now i'm just keeping it at default but sometimes people like to change it to give it that added little bit of security so once uh, once i've done that save those settings and as I said make a note of the IP address now we're ready to set up PDM and this is my maintenance station uh, PC but it could be PDM uh, standalone even the single tag license will support this functionality um, but really we're looking at a network infrastructure so you know a good license to have is PDM service which starts off with 50 tags which means 50 instruments so the first thing we need to do is set up our virtual serial port and I've already installed the uh, EVCOM uh, serial port adapter um, you can download this it's free um, so basically add a port this is going to be your virtual um, serial port now I have no other COM ports on here, just be careful that you don't duplicate a port that's already being used and one of the things that tends to use a lot of ports is, uh, is your Bluetooth interface so just be, be careful with that so I'm selecting COM port 1 and we can have auto create at startup and this is the IP address of the gateway And you can see there the port gateway 502 so if I've changed it on that gateway here it would have to match but I'm keeping it at the default value and this is just drop out timeouts so if it sees no activity it, it will um, um, drop the connection on this port so um, we enable that port and we're ready to set up PDM and if you try and close this down it doesn't completely close it it keeps it running in the background so you can put that in your startup for windows so it automatically starts when you start the pc so moving over to pdm so let me just expand this so you can see this this screen here um, on this project everything is profinet so you can see here my et 200 sp my compact uh, field unit and then i have a small profibus um, dp network underneath this automation station so I'm going to add another network and this is the beauty of PDM I can just keep adding multiple networks so if I had a wireless heart network on here I could add this as well so I'm going to insert a communication network first and that is going to be Modbus and you can see here I have no selection for Modbus TCP and that's the beauty of the uh, uh, serial virtual serial port so we'll add that then we've got to make some changes and this is the one thing that we normally um, struggle with over tech support so if you click on that the PC you'll see under there COM port interface right click go to object properties and here under communication COM port 1 okay so this has got to match what you've got on your virtual COM port and then you've got your transmission rate is um, 19,200 and there you can see my Modbus network now we've added the network all that remains is to add the device itself so with the Modbus network selected on the right hand side insert a new object and here you have the Modbus address uh, the default Modbus address for the uh, Citrans FC410 is 1 I'm going to show you how to change that so um, the first time you connect to a new device you'll have to set it up as one so we'll assign the device and you have to manually select because this de device identification is not supported um, uh, for Modbus connectivity so if we go to Coriolis or Tem um, I, I just have to point out here my Coriolis meter is really old um, there is a new EDD there's not much difference but you can you can change the units 
um, on the newer ones and it will change the units over Modbus as well. Uh, on this one uh, the units are fixed, fixed at engineering units. So if we click OK, Modbus address at 1 and then if we open that object and to test the communications I always just go on to the process variables. Once you've opened the the process variable screen you'll see here I've got a, a status alarm the mass flow zero I always say focus on something you understand when you're looking at digital data for the first time well there's a built-in temperature sensor and I can see that coming back and if I want to update the diagnostics I can just click on the the icon here and update the diagnostics we have full access to everything that we would over Modbus 485 through the TCP to Modbus 485 converter including things like advanced diagnostics so we can start looking at um, what is happening with my um, pickups and etc coming from the Coriolis meter but what we need to do this is a nice simple project there's only one Coriolis meter but um, as I alluded to earlier on they, they all come out with the address set as one so if you put all six on if you had six of them onto the network in one go um, it would you wouldn't know which one it would be reading so you've got to connect one at a time and then you come to this menu device so we've already got it set for address one and then under communication you, you'll have some options but the first thing you need to do is to log in so go to user type in the the user code 2457 click OK and you can see here le level successfully changed and then OK now, now we should be able to go into the communication um, uh, just be careful if, if you change your parity and board rate here you're going to have to go back to your HMS Anybus device and change it to match. We're just looking at the address of the slave, so I'm going to set that to 3. Okay, it, and it should come up with a warning. So it's saying here, please change it in my somatic manager 2. Because when I restart my communications, it's set up to talk to device 1. And when I click on this restart communication it's now set to address 3 so you can see up here look I've lost comms if I try to to go online I get a communication no connection so what I have to do is come out you do have to close it at this stage go back into my project here so this is what it's talking about back in Somatic. This is Somatic Manager. So even if you've got the standalone version, it'll be Somatic Manager OEM. It looks exactly the same. So right click this, Object Properties, and then set your communication to 3 now. And then keep adding all your flow meters to 1. Any bus uh, adapter, keep adding them. And now when I go into to here, so if I look at my process values now I can see I'm, I'm communicating to the device because I now have the uh, address set correctly. So there we have it, um, an overview of how to use a Modbus, to, Modbus TCP converter allowing up to eight masters to connect on the TCP side and then we've used the EVCOM uh, uh, virtual serial port adapter or emulator to allow PDM to connect. So what I'll look at in the next video is how you can bring that data into TIA portal, so the process data, so you can start doing something with it. But for now, thanks for listening. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe and click on the bell to, to receive notifications. Your support is very much appreciated. and Thanks for listening.